Hey fam, it's Pastor JT. Welcome to Family Worship Center. I'm so glad that you're here and from all of us at FWC, you made a great decision by joining us today. If this is your first time at Family Worship Center, welcome to the family. Whether you're here in person or watching online, we want to connect with you and here's how we can do that. If you're in person, visit our welcome squad in the main lobby. They have a free gift for you and they can answer any questions you may have about the church. And if you're watching online, type new in the comments and someone from our online engagement team will connect with you. I promise today will bless you. Today's service, whether it be the worship, the sermon, the fellowship, or all of the above, it will bless your life. I believe that God is doing something mighty and powerful through Family Worship Center and through all of our churches. We actually have several churches throughout South Carolina, and I encourage you that if you cannot make it to a service here in Columbia, go and worship at another Family Worship Center near you. Just visit our website, fwcchurches.com, to see all of our service times and locations. Then join us this coming Sunday. Well, it's almost time to kick off our service today, so get ready for worship and an incredible time in God's presence. If you're watching online, get engaged in the service. Worship with us. Feel free to comment along with the service and stay involved. Why don't you leave a comment right now and let us know where you're watching from. Lastly, make sure that you like this post, whether you're watching it from Facebook or YouTube, but if you are on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you never miss a video that we release or one of our upcoming live broadcasts. Well, we're going to get started in just a few minutes, so again, thank you for joining us today at Family Worship Center. I know that you're going to enjoy today's service. Stay blessed. Bear Grylls, where are you? I gotta film you, come on. Where did you go? I gotta film you, come on. Where did you go? Where did you go, Bear? Where did you go? Wow, boys and girls, it's Cub Wild. I tell you what, we got a great episode of Celebration Online planned for you this Sunday. Do not miss it. You can come in person in Florence, Georgetown, Columbia, and in Sumter. You're gonna have a great time. Don't forget that secret code and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Wow! Let's go! Come on, man! Let's go! Hi, I'm Amy and I'm the Children's Minister here at Family Worship Center. And every week I have the amazing privilege of teaching our children about Jesus. Because in my opinion, there's nothing greater than to watch a child give their heart to the Lord and see them grow in their relationship with the Lord. Well, every week while you're in the sanctuary, enjoying an amazing praise and worship service and hearing an inspiring message from your pastor, there's an amazing team of incredible volunteers who are teaching our children about Jesus. And I wanna invite you to be a part of that team. By joining our children's ministry team, you get to also have the amazing privilege of teaching our children about Jesus every week. Here at Family Worship Center, our children's ministry volunteers only serve once a month. And there are so many areas that you can choose from. You can rock a teeny tiny baby to sleep. You can read a toddler a book about Jesus or a great Bible story. Or you can also help teach the C No lesson, which is our curriculum over in the nursery. In celebration with our older kids, you can help pass out some Bible bucks, which they use to spend at our store with so many amazing things to choose from. You can help keep our children safe. You can help sign them in. You can even help pass out some yummy, delicious candy. 
Whatever you choose to help in, you are sure to enjoy it and you are going to be changing a life forever. It is so easy to sign up to get involved in Family Worship Center's children's ministry. All you need to do is go to our website, fwcchurches.com, and fill out a volunteer application there. Or you can also go out to our lobby and go to the volunteer desk and fill out an application there. Lastly, you can just simply fill out one of these cards that says, I want to be a part of the family. Drop it in the offering bucket and we will gladly sign you up to be an active participant in teaching our children about Jesus. Our kids need amazing volunteers like you to teach them about Jesus and God's love for them. I encourage you to sign up today. Worship Center, rise to your feet and worship with us. Hey, we praise you, praise your whole God. Come on, let's put our hands together and give praise to God for giving us a life that's full and free and life that we can live more abundantly. darkness into light, out of the grave and into life, up from the ashes we will rise, freedom is here and we're breaking out, breaking out, now by day, by, by night, we'll follow you wherever you need, tell our past goodbye, get ready for release.
give him God the glory and declare that we have a song in our heart and we have a not a shame to say
worship is faithful to the ages. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. what you say though the storms may Your faithfulness to me. 
as Ms. Tamika comes forward with the offering. Good morning, FWC. Good morning. Now y'all know if we were cheering for the Gamecocks women's basketball in the house of the Lord, we could be a little louder than that. Good morning, FWC. We want to take this time to welcome each and every one of our first time guests and we want to take this time to welcome each and every one of you to our service today. We also want to acknowledge our pastor JT and his family in their absence. Y'all know we have an amazing leader here at FWC. And we also have an amazing church family here at FWC. So we are so glad that each and every one of you decided to join us here today in person, and even those of you who are joining us online. This part of our service is an opportunity for us to give. And we know that when we give, we are actually honoring God. In Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 through 25, it says, give freely and become more wealthy, be stingy, and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Now the book of Proverbs is full of wisdom. It's life's instructions on various topics, including giving. Now I wanna just say this is not a pitch to try to convince you to give more today. But these opportunities are actually for us to dive deeper into the word of God to get a greater understanding of why tithing is important and the impact that giving has not only on our lives, but on the entire kingdom of God. Here in the word, we see that it encourages us to give freely and not withhold anything back. Now, I want you to say this with me. I will give freely and withhold nothing from God. Say it again, I will give freely and I will withhold nothing from God. See, whenever God, whenever pastor like gives us those things that he wants us to repeat, I wanna give you just a little strategy. Use those as declarations against the enemy because the enemy will sit here in the service and remind you, you just got an invoice for $2,400 there's no way you can give today. And you can tell him, no, today I'm gonna to give freely and I'm not gonna withhold anything from God. Why? Because he doesn't withhold anything from me as his child. That's what you do to the enemy. When he whispers in your ear, you really can't give anything extra today. I know you got your taxes back, but you can't give anything extra because remember, you got tuition for your son or daughter. No, I'm going to give freely, and I'm not going to withhold anything back. Why? Because I serve a God who does exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I can ask or think. Use the word as your weapon against the enemy when it comes to your finances. Don't look for security in your paychecks. See, that's what the world does. The world says, go after more money. And let me just put a plug in here, there's nothing wrong with making money. Because money is a tool. But the world would say, quit your job and go after that six-figure position. But God was already telling you, just hold on. Why? Because your supervisor was gonna leave and he was gonna open that door for you. But if you decided to chase the paycheck and not chase the word of the master, 
you would have ended up somewhere that God didn't direct you. Because in Proverbs verse 11, verse 28, it says, whoever trusts in his riches will fall, but the righteous will flourish like a green leaf. Why would the righteous flourish? Because we follow the commands of God. We don't follow the commands of the world. We follow the commands of God. And tithing is a command of God. In Proverbs 3 and 9, it says, honor the Lord with your first fruit. We know that verse. We hear it all the time. We read it all the time. But there is a word that says, then. So I have to honor God first. Then you will give, he will give us plenty and allow our barns Our barns will be filled with plenty and our vats will be bursting. But first, y'all, we have to honor God. We can't allow the enemy to whisper those things in our ears, to remind us of all the things that come up and all of, you know, the car breakdown. We can't allow him to remind us of that. Because what I do when that happens, I sit in my car and people at the light are looking at me like I'm crazy. But I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So I'm not going to allow you to distract me today. So here is what I want to encourage you. Because we serve a God of more than enough. We serve a God who has plenty of promises and abundance. We have to follow God's command. Trust in God with all your heart. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Give freely, give generously, and give cheerfully and follow God's command for tithing. Because when we do these things, we honor God, we receive the blessings, we get the abundance, and God continues to expand his kingdom because of the impact that you and I have in our giving. So here's how you can give today with us. There are envelopes that are at your seats. You can give through Cash App. You can give through Text to Give. Um, You can give, I'm not going to say the thing about Bitcoin because I don't even know how to do all that. But you can give through fwc.com as well. So we're going to pray and then we're going to receive our ushers to who are going to give us the directions for offering. So Heavenly Father and most gracious God, we thank you for every single blessing that you have bestowed upon every family at FWC. We thank you that you're the God of everything, and we honor you today by giving you our first fruits. We thank you that our abundance comes from you and not from our earthly mindset or from any worldly treasures. And today we give with a cheerful heart because we know that you love a cheerful giver and it will impact your kingdom. God, we ask that you help us to steward our time, our talents, and our treasures for your glory In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm so bummed that I'm not there in person with you today, but I'm excited and pumped for your special guest that's going to preach, man. You are going to be blessed today, and I'm going to introduce him in just a second. But before I do, don't forget about these upcoming events. This Wednesday, I'll be back, and we're going to have Wednesday night worship, family night, as we call it. Six o'clock is when our teenagers meet every Wednesday at six, and then every Wednesday at seven, we have a full-blown service. For the adults and kids, be there this Wednesday. I want to see you in this coming Sunday or week from now, April 21st, baptisms. For those that want to be, uh, that want to rededicate their lives or recommit to God, or maybe you've just never been baptized, 
sign up and get baptized. And then the whole church, all of you, you need to be there. We're going to celebrate all of these great lives and celebrate what God's done in their lives. So be there uh, next Sunday. Then the Sunday after that, the 28th, we're doing baby dedications. Make sure you sign up if you want to have your child dedicated. You can do that in the lobby or on our website. And then the 28th at night or five o'clock, we are going to the Columbia Fireflies baseball game. I love going to the baseball games. It's faith and family night, so it's gonna be a Christian theme night. And you can sit in our section by purchasing tickets on our website. Come, uh, have a hot dog with us, uh, eat some popcorn or whatever, some ice cream, and enjoy a great baseball game uh, at the Columbia Fireflies Segra Park downtown. All right, it's time for the word. It's time to hear from Brother Foster Jackson. I can't wait to hear his message. He always has a great word. If you don't know, Brother Foster attends our church, Family Worship Center in Florence, South Carolina, and uh, is a graduate of Rama Bible Institute. He's a great man of God. I always love hearing him. So please give him a warm Family Worship Center Columbia welcome. Put your hands together. Brother Foster, take it away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's just lift our hands and give some praise, some honor, and some glory to the one that sits in the heavens. You know, this is not a dress rehearsal. They're shooting real ammo. It's a do or die situation. And whatever you have going on in your life that's adverse to uh, your best interests, God has your answer. And all you have to do is just receive it. He's already done it. Your healing has already been provided. What we need to do is like those great uh, football receivers like Randy Moss and some others that we could name. They put the ball in the air and they go to it. Your healing is in the air. Go get it. It is yours. What are you going to do? God has done everything that he's going to do about your well-doing. What are you going to do? The ball is in your court. Hallelujah. I, I, I think I have a word for you today. I'm going to sit on this stage if you don't mind. Uh, I believe I, this is the capital city of South Carolina. It, it hasn't changed, has it? I, I, I believe, how many of you are members in this house? You, you, you're a member? You, you, you're joined in with, uh, you're linked in to the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, if, if you are part of this house, I want to say to you, help this pastor win this city for Jesus Christ. Yes. Seize the city for Jesus. Capture this city for heaven. And the way you do that is to use the weapons that God has placed on the inside of you. Agape love is the most powerful weapon that we have. And you know, we don't use it nearly enough. We allow selfishness to rise to the, to the surface and take over. When, when an unsaved person on the street hand us, you know, give us the middle finger, you know, I think everybody knows what, it, it, it irritates us. But you got to push that flesh down and live in the supernatural. And one way to do that is to understand that you're royalty. You're, you're not just a mere human. You're not just a natural man, but you came from the body of Christ. You have his blood running inside you. His blood redeemed you from the curse of the law. You know what redemption is all about? It's God giving you another chance as if nothing 
that you experienced before ever happened. Uh, when we were, when I was uh, uh, 18 years old, I went in the uh, Air Force. I went to Charleston, West Virginia, and we play basketball. And when we lost the game, we shoot horse. And when you got those five letters on you, you were out. And uh, you know, I was down from down here. And uh, when you got the letters on you, you sat down. So there were some times that I missed five times, and I had horse on me. And they said, "Hey." You have a redeemer. You have a shot. And if you make it, you're back in the game with no letters. Jesus has redeemed us <laughs> from the curse of the law. He's redeemed us from poverty. Now, if you walk in that redemption, you're going to have to be assertive. It's not going to drop on you like ripe cherries out of a tree. You got to reach up and... We've been redeemed from sickness. And when sickness come, you've got to resist sickness. You know, I had my, my uh, hip uh, replaced uh, back in 2018, I believe it is. And here lately, it act like it doesn't want to work. <laughs> you know, it's like an old tree stump or something, doesn't. I talk to it. See, the word of God is powerful. The word of God has in it the ability to do what it say it will do. Hallelujah. But it will not work for you with your mouth closed. I look at that hip and I say walk in Jesus' name. I can't just sit there and tell it to walk. I've got to step. I've got to limp. Do whatever I have to do until that healing take hold and I step off. And that will happen. You know, it, you know it, it, if you stay with it, God will bring it to fruition. The reason why it doesn't manifest is because we give up. We give out. And we go a different way. We change out. Well, maybe God. No, God is consistently the same. He never changes. And he has your good at heart every day. You know, when, when, when I was on, on my way over here, I was just thinking, today is April 14th. Is that right? 2024. You know, a long time ago, my mother would be something like 98. She died in, uh, or maybe she came alive, I think, in 2017. You know, they are more alive than we are if they are in Christ. Y'all do know that, right? You know, <laughs> that is life. To be with Christ is life. This is just, it's not really life, completely life. But... Uh, she and my dad, they were married on uh, April 14th. And I was thinking about you guys, all of you uh, that are here today. You know, God knows the end at the beginning. When he said, like be in the beginning, he saw us here at FWC on this day. You need to hear what I'm saying. Our God is an awesome God. He has his answer for you. He knows how to fix what's broken, and he knows how to fix it, fix it at your age and at your age. When I, when I was your age, man, we had a guy named Jesse King. He intimidated all of us. We were like little sticks and twigs, and he was already developing muscles. You know, most bullies are bigger than the people they pick on. Well, God would have helped me, but I didn't know how to elicit his help. Uh, 
It, it, it doesn't matter your age. Wilma and I used to teach children when we were in Tulsa. And we had this six-year-old girl. She and her family came from Michigan. And Joanne said that her parents, Thelma and Michael, had decided to throw in the towel, call it quits. You know, it's easy to do that. But I don't think that's an answer for Christians. I don't think that that's the solution for Christians. When you make a vow, you need to keep that vow. You need to love them until death do you part. Well, Thelma and Michael had thrown in the towel, and Joanne said she was six years old. Thank you. And uh, she went in the basement of the house and said, Lord, keep my mother and father together. God heard that little girl's prayer. And uh, they had how many kids when we knew them? They like, had a whole bunch of them. They had a whole herd of them. <laughs> God heard that prayer. And if God would hear Joanne's uh, Duchess prayer, he'll hear your prayer. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young, God cares about you. God knows about you. Tasha Cobb, like that song, sings that song, he knows my name. He knows your name. He knows your address. He knows what problems you have. He knows what baggage you have. Bro, you know, we think sometimes we are all that. See, see you blessed to have me. Well, we better look at it the other way. You didn't bring everything to the table you think you brought. You better talk to somebody that know how it really is. Am I right, bro? You see, <laughs> your opinion is just that, your opinion. You need to get a reality check. Talk to somebody who actually knows what's going on and... Uh, uh, really get with the program. And, and I want to encourage you today. Let me just say this. I, I'm not your average preacher. I don't try to impress anybody except him. That's, it's all about Jesus. It's not about me. I've been to too many churches where you have Apollo on Sunday morning in the music, and then you have your grand finale with the pastor. We need what Jesus wants to do in his people. We look at politics, it's not working. I never have seen so many confused people in all my life. Can't do this. Can't come together on this. Democrats are not going to fix it. Republicans are not going to fix it. Independence or any other name is not going to fix it. The only person who has the fix for all of this is Jesus. This city called Columbia need to see Jesus manifested in your household. Your children need to see Jesus as you talk to them. Your children need to see Jesus as you talk to their daddy and as they, you talk to their mother and their relatives and their neighbors. Jesus needs to manifest himself in our lives. He can do it for young people. You know, we think we need to go and run around and try this girl or try that guy. You don't need to kiss frogs. You need to find a girl that God has for you. You know in your heart of heart that that's the one, and you don't have to play these stupid games that the world plays. Am I too straight? 
I'm an old man and I don't have a whole lot of time. I got to say it. <laughs> God has put inside you what you need not only to get you over in life, but to help those in your environment. On your job, we have all kinds of crazy stuff going on on jobs. We have people who are not qualified in positions and somebody else is doing their work and they are getting the pay. You might be in one of those positions where you're doing somebody else's work, do that job as unto the Lord. Don't grumble, don't, don't, don't complain. My wife tells me that all the time. I think she needs to, you know, don't you think? <laughs> Tell me to do everything without grumbling and complaining. Sometimes <laughs> that's exactly what I feel like I need to do. But is that the godly thing? Is that let not the Jesus nature? No, it's not. It's not. And that's what we need to do to allow the Jesus nature to come out of us. You know, the Bible says that the devil comes in like he comes in. You know, they have that uh, punctuated. The devil comes in like a storm. He doesn't come in like a storm or like a flood. He comes in, and like a flood, God lifts up a standard. You know, a flood is not timid. A flood tears up things. It tears up concrete. It uproots trees. God is the flood, but he's not there for destruction. God is more like a tsunami but not for destruction, <laughs> but for good. God can come in your life no matter how much turmoil you have, and he can bring peace. He will bring peace. He is the prince of peace. And when, when you and I are operating in the love of God, the agape of love, love of God. Agape is unconditional love. I don't love you because you're nice. I don't love you because you're rich. I've made a decision to love you, and I'm going to love you. That's what God did for us. When we were unlovely, he loved us. We love him. Because he first loved us. The Bible says, in order to make friends, show yourself friendly. Don't worry about what he does. What are you doing? Don't worry about how they're treating you on the job and talking about you. See, that is our weapon. No matter what the devil does, I'm going to walk in love. Oh, that's a hard decision. That's a hard road to hope. You say it, and then you find yourself fighting back, sometimes getting into a physical fight. But we, you know, God will forgive you. That's why First, first John 1, 9, if you confess your faults, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That is for Christians. That's in the middle of the epistles. The epistles are written to, to Christians, not sinners. So when you mess up, you can clean up by confessing your sin. But sometimes some of us have so much pride, we are not going to confess anything. I'm not trying to get down on you. I'm just a bigger brother trying to say some things, and sometimes we say it a little rough. You know, sometimes in order to, to get somebody to listen to you, you got to shake them a little bit. 
I'm not really trying to shake you, but I'm trying to get something across. This pastor is here trying to win this city for Jesus. Don't come in half-stepping. If you're supposed to show up, show up. Show up on time. Show up with your A game on. I don't, it doesn't matter what happens at home. It doesn't matter what happened in the parking lot. Leave it out there and come in and demonstrate Jesus. You know, a lot of people, I've heard a story of a man had been involved in homosexuality a long time. You, you, you know, most people don't just embrace that. Most of the time, somebody that they know get them involved. It was an older man, a neighbor, got him involved in that stuff. And he went through high school. He thought everybody was like that. And he found out that that wasn't the way to be. And a psychiatrist in high school began to help him so that he could take advantage of him. Isn't that something? You know. Recently, I was looking at, uh, you, you, you know, homosexual, it's homosexuality is prevalent in the church. Y'all do know that, right? You, you know, we don't like to deal with reality. We, homosexuality is a real thing in the church and not because of what we see on TV. There were men that went around and sang had gospel groups, and you know they protected the men that were involved in that junk, and the kids, what, they, what do you call it, collateral? We just discard you, you're nothing. No, they are somebody. And uh, it was wrong then, and it's wrong now. I'm not picking on people that... Uh, are involved in that, and that's not my subject. But I'm just talking about instances where the church turns its back on the victim. We're supposed to, if you're victimized, I'm supposed to help you. Uh, women get brutalized by their husband and because he's a policeman, they let him go. Oh, he's been a cop for 15 years. He's been abusing women as long as he has been an adult. We need to cut that out. The Bible says righteousness exalted a nation, but sin is a reproach to him. To any people. Let, you know, the Bible says if you say what's good is bad, and what is bad is good, that's an abomination in the sight of God. And as we look across the media, we got people all over the place saying, this is good, it's not good. And lying about that. Church, we need to stand up, put on our big boy pants, and say, I'm doing it God's way. I'm going to raise my children God's way. I'm going to love my wife like God wants me to love her. Let me tell you a story of love. We were out there in Tulsa. You know, some people think if you pray in tongues, <laughs> it's a good thing. God gave it to us. The Bible says in Jude 20, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in tongues, it helps buoy you up. It builds you up in your most holy faith, but it doesn't keep you from sin. Oh, you got to stay out of sin yourself. When that good-looking woman comes up and sit beside you and grabs your hand and follow you to various places you are alone. 
you've got to do the right thing and say, I'm married. I'm not interested. Well, you think they're going to stop? They're persistent. Devil are, devils are persistent. But the Bible says if you resist him, he will flee from you. He'll run away as in terror. You got to say no. You got to say no with authority. You know, sometimes I would go some places with my kids, and they would ask me for certain things. And back in the days, sometimes I just didn't have the money. And you don't want to go through all that rigmarole. I just can't afford it. No. They're not going to ask you anymore because that was pretty stern. And you think about it, you say, man, I didn't mean to be that rough. But, but, but sometimes that's the way you have to talk to the devil and tell him where he's supposed to be under my feet. Can you say that? Satan, you're under my feet. Say it with authority. Say that every morning. You're under my feet. No matter what the devil does, I win. I don't care how much sand he raised, I win. When I go see the doctor and he tells me, oh, you have an incurable cancer. Uh, the Bible says uh, the report of the Lord is himself. Jesus himself took my infirmities and bare my sicknesses. You know, you can take those words and speak those. A 16-year-old boy in McKinney, Texas, named Kenneth E. Hagan, had a blood disorder and some other things, three things wrong with him. He's paralyzed in a bed. And the ministry of the gospel come there and tell him, oh, young man, pat him on the head, and it'll be over after a while. You're going to be dead. That, that's what they were saying. But he got a hold of his grandmother's Bible, began to read Mark 11, 23 and 24, began to turn that over, and was healed from the bed of affliction, walked off, and for 50-some years, he preached the gospel of healing. Oh, it's what you do with the Bible. It's not what you don't do. All things are possible to him that believes. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Glory to God. You know, God is a God of plenty. And that plenty is for us. We don't, God doesn't put low ceilings on us. God doesn't put a ceiling on us. That, that, that's employment, people. They'll build a low ceiling. You're not going any further. I don't care what you do. Well, you know, just believe God. Work, be diligent, and God will move you. God, God, will, God will make sure you get a plant just like theirs, and put it right beside there and run them right out of business. That's the God. But you don't do it with a bad attitude. You don't have any, uh, uh, you're not vindictive. You know, you walk in love. You know, love does not try to hurt. Love is not revengeful. Love, love, uh, never suffers a wrong. Love never gives out. I'm tired of this. I'm not taking it anymore. Seems like that's a little bit selfish. All of us know about being selfish. I'm going to get my share. People walk from the table. I got mine. Well, what about everybody else? Let's be considerate. Let's make the other make sure the other person gets what they're supposed to get. Oh, hallelujah. 
We're not go-getters, we're go-givers. And we have something to give. God has placed inside of us good, great, and precious promises. And those promises will keep you and take you where God wants you to go and help you to do what God wants you to do. You know, we think our Yale degree or Harvard degree is going to get it done. No, it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that breaks the yoke. You know what a broken yoke is? It's like an old rusted car that the fender is eroded. You can look at the fender and look through the fender and see the ground. How you gonna fix that? I mean, you touch it and it just disintegrate. Have you seen something like that before? That's what the anointing does. It eradicates what the devil has done. And instead of letting God's power work, we slip down to this lower level and get on Satan's level. The Bible says that my ways are not like your ways. For my ways are higher than your ways. Oh, hallelujah. We need to think like God thinks. We need to speak like God speak. In Columbia, South Carolina, tomorrow morning, think about yourself the way God thinks about you. Gideon was saying of himself, I'm just a farmer. And of all the farmers in my family, I'm the least one. Well, God looked at him and said, man of valor. That, that's, that's, that's a whole different subject. He, he's looking at him on a totally different level. He had some 32,000 men that he was going out to fight against the enemy. And God said, you got too many. <laughs> Just Jesus and me. We are the majority. I don't care who doesn't go with me as long as it's Jesus and me. I'm going to do what God says. It doesn't matter what anyone else tells me. It doesn't matter who's against me. If God is for you, he's more than the whole world against you. And so as you stand with this pastor here, in, 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 in Columbia, stay with him. God's placed him here. You know, sometimes uh, the person that's in leadership, they're not going to tell you things that you are in agreement with. God, God, God is his father. God is your father. But God has placed him here to be the pastor. I, I respect my pastor. I don't want his job. I don't try to make his decisions. You know, that's over your play grade. You know, when you're driving a car, if you want to be safe, you stay in your lane. Is that right? Uh, we constantly get out of our lanes. We want to make decisions about things we're not qualified to make. Now, I'm not saying somebody needs to run your life. But if you stay with your pastor and you do what you want to do, you know, do what he wants you to do, he, he, he's not going to try and bogart you and you do this. And you, you have the Holy Ghost inside you. You're a man and, and, and you feel like this is something that you shouldn't do. You say, hey, pastor, hold on. Let's talk about this. Your pastor will listen. You know, I, I've had loved ones to die here recently. And you know, they were in churches that didn't believe in healing. My brother, I was in a church when my brother was three years old. I, I was in Charleston, West Virginia. My daddy called and said, you need to come home. Your baby brother died, three years old, right at his 
fourth birthday, and he died. They went to church every Sunday. He was a bleeder, and his nose would bleed, and, you know, he'd beg my mother every week, I want to go to church. I want to go to church. And if she could get him to stop bleeding long enough, she took him to church. But, but Gary died. He, was, he would have been 10 in September 10th. He didn't make it. He died in August, a few days short of his fourth birthday. The devil doesn't care if you're young. He doesn't care if you're old. He doesn't care if you're male. He doesn't care if you're female. He doesn't care if you're black. He doesn't care if you're white. He doesn't care anything. He knows that you're made in the image and the likeness of God, and he hates your guts. And we get in all of this superficial nothingness, a lot of to do about nothing. We need to get on the wavelength that God is on and shake the city for Jesus. I'm talking about Christians. I'm not talking about the world. I'm not talking about going out here and taking a pole and marching and all of that. I'm talking about getting on our knees and praying in the Holy Ghost and getting the will of God and going out and doing it. He doesn't need an army. All he needs is a few. On the day of Pentecost, there was only 120. God shook up this whole world with 120 people in a room waiting for the day of Pentecost to fully come. And when it came, there came into that room a sound of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house, glory to God. And everybody in the room began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. They were filled. I was filled with the Holy Ghost. Get this. But I don't speak in tongues. Well, you weren't filled like they were filled in the book of Acts. Don't try to do it some other way. Do it God's way. If they were filled and sp spoke with the Holy Ghost, you need to get filled and speak with the Holy Ghost. There are not two Holy Ghosts. There's only one. The Holy Ghost, when a person gets saved, he places us into the body of Christ, making us Christians. When we get born again, we are candidates to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. And we walk around like we don't know what time of day it is. It's gotten late in the evening. The sun is going down and we've got to get busy about doing the master's business. Oh, you need to hear what I'm preaching. You know, we're here today. We don't know whether we're going to be here next week. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old. You know, these little kids on their way to school, only thing they got to think about is lunch. You know, children don't have a whole lot of worry. You know, that some of them are in a stressful situation. But here they are not thinking about anything, and you got a lunatic with a gun all over the country, in the rich areas, in the poor areas, all kind of people, you name it, they've gone to funerals with their loved ones. You know what, church? You know the, the police cannot sni uh, stop snipers. That's the job of the church. On your knees, praying for the police force to be in areas that they need to be to see things they need to see. For a little while, I worked at the um, juvenile center in um, Bennettsville. 
And we come over here to DJJ. I mean, these little boys, they were hardened criminals. I mean, they should have been, they should have been at home at night, but they out running around selling drugs, breaking, uh, breaking into uh, gun shops. That's how they got the guns. You know, I talked to them. They tell me how they got it. Some of them, you, you talk to them, and you could tell they were kids, but you let something go wrong. That gangster will rise up in them, and it will full-fledged. We allow that to happen. We got a prison system that's broken. You got more junk going on in the prison. You and I have to fix that. What we see, we're to ask the Lord, what is my part? What am I supposed to do? Well, Besides pray, pray until he tells you. You know, when you know, you know, I've heard stories of uh, eagles, people catching eagles, little eagles, capturing them, putting them out on the chicken yard with the chickens, clipping their wings, uh, never had flown. But once those wings grow out, and if they ever got a chance, the next thing that farmer knew, he'd see that bird soaring in the air. And no one taught him because it was in him. That's who he is. That's what eagles do. You and I are Christians, and we love extremely hard with the agape love of Jesus. When someone comes in contact with you, that that's in you and on you gets off on them. I've got one person I want to talk to you about, and I'm going to quit. Uh, Joseph. Joseph was uh, Jacob's son one of the youngest, the baby for a while, and he favored that boy. Bought him a coat of many colors. Had him uh, hated by his other brothers. And Joseph would brag because God talked to him and told him, you're going to be a great man. You know, you and I, we need to stay on our faces to God tell us what he's going to do with us. He told, God told him this as a young man. And then he told him further, uh, your mom and dad are going to bow down and worship you. And he went off and blabbed it to his brother, and it made them more furious. So they decided one day, let's just get this little boy out of our lives. You know, daddy loves him more than he does us anyway. Let's just kill him. And the oldest brother... Reuben said, no, that's our brother. Let's not kill him. Let's sell him. So they sold him to some uh, Ishmaelites. They took him down to Egypt. They went to Potiphar's house. They sold Joseph. This is the boy that was going to be greater than his brother, greater than his mother and father, and he winds up in a hole. That anointing was still on him in that hole. When they sold him to Potiphar, Potiphar started giving him duties and that gift that was in him. Oh, hallelujah. He was not even born again, came to the forefront, and everything that he did, it was better than anybody else. And Potiphar put him over more and more. He was doing everything that was in the house. And he put the field, the things in the field, and he was in control of all of that. And his wife saw him, and he realized that this boy, a slave, that anointing will work on you as a slave. <laughs> Wearing slave clothes, eating uh, slave food, living in the slave quarters, that anointing of God was on him. And that woman saw him, he, he, you know, he worked. 
had the grace of God on him, a good-looking guy. And that woman saw him and desired him. And I was told, rich people, you can't tell them that they can't have what they want to have. If it's your wife, if they want them, they're going to have them. Gotcha. I'm going to have them. I'm going to have them. And uh, she grabbed him. Well, first she said, you know, I, I want to be with you. He said, that's not right. That's not right before my master. He's put me over everything he has. It's not right. She said, well, he won't knew, know anything about it. He said, God will know. And she grabbed him. And he ran out from under her. And she said, he tried to seduce me. Put him in jail. And in jail, that anointing was working in that jail. That jailer saw that anointing on him. And everything he had to do in that jail, he put it in Joseph's hands. Joseph was available when Pharaoh had that dream about those 14 cows. Gave him the interpret God gave him the interpretation, and he told him, it's not me, it's God. God gave the interpretation, and Pharaoh pulled him out of that prison, made him ride in a chariot behind him. And here are Israelite. They had the men of Egypt bowing the knee. When he came by, they would say, bow the knee. Second greatest man in Egypt because of what God had placed on him. God's placed something in you and you and all of you. You need to find out what it is. Hallelujah. And let it loose and help this pastor do what God wants him to do. Hallelujah. I'm going to do a quick altar call, and here I, I like doing my altar calls like they do out on the mission field. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask the Lord to do miracles. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are in this house. You know every need. Father, your word said you do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And we say to you, do it. In Jesus' name. Every knee met. In Jesus' name. And we thank you. We praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Foster. As always, what an amazing word you brought to us here today. And we thank you for taking your time to coming over. Um, great. So as you rise to your feet for the dismissal, I want you guys to stomp your heart to remind the devil that he belongs under your feet. Amen? Amen? Really hard. Let him know this is where you belong. And remember to walk in love as Brother Foster preached. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this amazing service. Thank you for Brother Foster coming here to bring the word, Father God. Thank you for using him, guiding him. Lord, I ask you that you uh, bring your angels, put your angels over everyone here today as they leave this house, Father God, but not of, of your presence, Father. And we thank you, Lord, and we glorify your mighty name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today at Family Worship Center. I know that you were blessed and encouraged by today's service, and we just want to say thank you for joining us. Listen, if this was your first time here, first time as a part of our family, we encourage you to type new in the comments before you log off and let us know that you're new, or maybe send us a direct message. Connect with us somehow because we want to say welcome to the family by sending you a free gift. Also, I want to encourage you to, to all of our family who watch online, stay connected with us. Stay connected to our upcoming events on our website. Stay connected to our social media channels on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Of course, our YouTube channel where we're releasing videos weekly. 
We want to keep you connected to what God's doing at Family Worship Center. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe all of our content so that you never miss something new from FWC. Well, we love you, God bless you, and we'll see you next time.